Hey, Divas Lindsay here. Happy Monday to you. Hope you are having a fantastic start to your week. So last week's training bundle, we talked about the hostess packet and how important it was to have a great hostess packet that give the um, best impression as well as really kept your hostess informed and excited about her party. Now, the second part about hostess coaching, of course, is where you come in. So you've, you've booked the party, yay, we're excited about that. She got her hostess packet, she's all excited, she's got everything she needs. Now is the third part of hostess coaching. And again, I, you know, this is so very important. They say that 80% of the party happens before you ever walk through the front door. And this is what they're talking about. These, these three steps here, this is what they're talking about. Hostess coaching is critical to the success of your party. It is literally what can make or break your party. And it is how you can take control of your business and help make every single party the absolute best that it can be. It is also intimidating. People don't like hostess coaching. You feel like you're bothering your hostess. You feel like you're badgering her. You don't know what to say. I think that people don't do it because they don't want to feel pushy. They don't want to feel like, you know, that they're bugging her. They think the hostess will call me if she has a question, that kind of thing. And I want you to get that all out of your mind because it's so not true. What we've done here at Party Plenty of is, is I have broken down your hostess coaching into three phone calls. Okay. And I've given you a script and an outline and absolutely everything that you need to make sure that your hostess coaching is seamless, quick and easy, gets the job done in every single piece. You know, it's kind of like a puzzle. It goes towards that very perfect party and makes that party the absolute best that it can be. All right. So let's go right into it. First thing, there's a couple tools that you're going to want to have. And the first one is going to be all about organization. When you book a party, the very first thing you're going to do is create your own hostess folder. This is for you to keep, different from the hostess packet. I know I said folder a couple times last week and I apologize. This is for you. The folder is for you. The packet is for her, okay? Um, but this is how you're going to stay organized. You're going to keep everything about your party in its own little folder. These hostess folders are worth their weight in gold. So you want to make sure that you keep them neat, you keep them organized, um, and that you keep them. If you have a stack of order forms somewhere, uh, then you know that that's not how, it's not getting the best use of those order forms. Um, so we're going to talk about the tools and how to, again, keep it organized. So real simple, a folder, kind of a no-brainer, right? But I have created two worksheets, Hostess Worksheet 1 and Hostess Worksheet 2, which will be listed below, that you're going to use. And here's what I did. I literally simply, so here, here's our folder, right? And it opens up like this. So what I did is I take Hostess Worksheet 1 and I literally staple it to the inside and Hostess Worksheet 2. Okay, staple to the inside. So I'm gonna do that right quick so that I can show you. Ah! Whoops, I did that too fast. My stapler didn't like that. Hang on a second. <laughs> it's not letting go now. All right, hang on. There we go, that's better. All right, so forgive my dirt, my ugly staple here. I have one that's kind of not wanting to let go. Um, but so this is going to be where you can do it. This is going to be where you keep everything having to do with this party. Okay. It keeps it nice. It keeps it organized. Now up here on this tab, you're going to write your hostess's name, your hostess's phone number, and the date the party is scheduled to happen. Okay. The reason why is because you want to file these in chronological order, meaning the order in which the parties are held. The reason why is going to be, let's say that you have a party this weekend and six months from now, somebody calls you and she says, Hey, Lindsay, I um, went to your party like back in June. I went with my sister though, so I don't remember who the hostess was. I'd never met her before, but do, can you, do you have my order for her? Like, do you see, do you have any information? I mean, something, you know, so you can go, oh, okay, June, let me look back at June. Um, let's see, could it have been Casey? Could it have been, you know, Kim, whatever. You can kind of go through, or they may call you and they would say, hey, I was at Kim's party um, sometime like in the early part of the summer. Okay, and you go and you can say, you know, again, okay, Kim was in June. Great, got it. So chronological order is the best way to file these. Again, you put her name, her phone number, and the date the party was held. Okay, now, this is going to keep 
everything, everything, everything for your party. Um, when you get your guest list, remember the guest list that was so important, when you get that filled out, you're gonna put that in this folder and you're gonna keep it in this folder for two reasons, okay? Number one, when it's time to mail the invitations, you know right where it is because it's in her folder. But number two is the guest list no-shows. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But so the guest list goes in here. And then if you look, this first worksheet has our three calls right here. The reason why I put them in here is because you can literally host as coach from wherever you are. If you've got your mobile office and you've got this with you, if you are waiting in the car line to pick up the kids, maybe you are in the car and you're watching your kid play soccer, or maybe you know you, you can do it right from home. Wherever it is, when you've got your folder, you can do your hostess coaching. Now we'll quickly go over um, the first call, setting, confirming the date. If you, excuse me, if you booked the party maybe at a party or standing in line or whatever. You just wanna start by confirming the date to make sure that the hostess doesn't need to change it. Sometimes we get home and we're like, oh shoot, you know, so-and-so is gonna be out of town that weekend, so I don't wanna have it. And they have to, you know, move the date. No problem, but start by confirming the date. We talked last week about the hostess packet and using the verbiage, in order to secure your date, you need to get that guest list back. So make sure that you get the guest list back but confirm the date. Um, and then go over the things that are in the hostess packet, just really, really quickly. Explain the party squares or the hostess scavenger hunt. Explain the cancellation policy if you, you know, if you say, hey, listen, I, I, that, don't let that be, you know, a deterrent to you or anything. I'm just really, really booked. So if there's any reason why you can't hold it, please just let me know. Um, make her start her wish list or encourage her to start her wish list. That's going to save you some time in the ordering room. Um, and then, you know, uh, let them know when you're going to call again. The other thing too is to ask them if they have any questions. Sometimes if you're leading a conversation, you know, if you've ever been the person that's like being asked all the questions, unless they ask you if you have a question, you'll forget. If you've ever hung up the phone, you're like, oh shoot, I meant to ask whatever. No problem. I'll ask her when she, you know, calls me back or whatever. No. Ask your hostess if she has any questions. Super important to see what's going on with the party. She may have questions. It's going to tell you like, is there a minimum amount of people? Is there a maximum amount of people? How long does the party normally go? Those kind of questions are really, really important for your hostess to ask. They're information that doesn't normally go in the hostess packet, and it's going to tell you a whole lot about your party. And the final thing, again, is to let her know when you're going to call back so she can expect to know when she's going to hear from you. If you are practicing the Diva Success system, which is our time management system for Party Plan Divas, then you do your hostess coaching on Wednesday. So let her know that. The reason why it's so important is, number one, she's going to know when to call you. And number two, you're setting the you know, recruiting seed there by showing how you can schedule out your time. It's organized you know, doing your stuff on Wednesday night. So, you know, it's done. This is all kind of lining up for that recruiting. The second call. Now, one thing that I will say, if you've got, you know, the time in between, you need to make sure that you get these three calls in. Even if you booked your party for only 10 days out, that's okay. Call her every three days. It'll work. You know, just try to space it out. If you've got six weeks between your party, then it's okay to call them every every two weeks or whatever. Always saying, if you need me between now and then, you know, absolutely, you can call me. So the second call, if you have not yet received the guest list, make sure you get that, okay? If she needs to send it by fax, email, carrier pigeon, whatever, make sure you get that guest list in order to secure the date. I personally would not do a party without a guest list. It was that important. Do it how you wanna do it. I'm just telling you, for me, I would not do a party without a guest list. I wanted to know that my hostess was as committed to the success of the party as I was. All right, um, go over again, party squares, make sure she's done her wish list. Um, if you have already received the guest list, then you would let her know when you either already mailed it or when you plan to mail the invitations, that kind of thing. The third call is one of the most important out of the three because you're gonna get a whole lot of information. For one, you're going to confirm everything, okay? And this third call needs to be you know, day or two before the party. This one's really close. So confirm everything. Gonna see you Friday night at seven o'clock at your house at, you know, 8201 of our parkway, whatever. Yes, okay. Um, make sure that you've got the head count. How many people is she expecting? Now this was never an exact, we know that, but kind of get an idea. If she thinks 25 people are coming and you're expecting 12 because that's what was on the guest list, 
then you know you want to make sure that you don't show up and not have enough goodies for everybody. It's always better to have too much than not enough. Um, ask about outside orders, how she's done with that. Again, party squares, all this kind of stuff. This is all listed on here. Um, explain how the hostess stuff is tallied so she'll know how she can earn her goodies. Also, another one that's really, really important that people forget about is ask about a place to set up. And does she have a table or do you need to bring your own? Um, I have showed up at parties where I forgot to ask that. She thought I was bringing a table. I thought she had a table you know, makes for some, some improvision of trying to find something to, uh, to set up on. Um, and then the other thing is to say that if you need help getting into the ordering room, let her know that's kind of her job. And when we talk into the party presentation, we'll talk more about how to get your hostess involved in helping you with that process. Um, but make sure that she kind of knows that ahead of time. So you can see how all of this is nice and organized in your hostess folder. And then the second part uh, of the hostess folder here is the recap. So this is what you will fill out. Oh, my computer's calibrating. So this is what you will fill out after the party is over, okay? So you keep this folder, take this folder with you to the party. It should already be in your mobile office anyway. Um, but so you take this with you and fill it out after the party is over. It's got your guests in attendance, party sales, outside orders, all that kind of good stuff. This is if you need to mail out any hostess packets or recruiting packets. And then the last thing is the note sent to the hostess. Make sure you always send a thank you note to your hostess. I actually kept my thank you notes in the console of my car. Uh, and I would fill it out either as I was leaving my hostess's house or as soon as I got home. That way I knew it was being done uh, and I would get it in the mail to her right away. All right, so again, that is the reason why you want to keep the hostess folders organized. You've got all your order forms in there, any back orders, any anything. You keep it all together so that each party is kind of its own. Another reason why this is really, really important is because when you're going back to reservice old hostesses, doing VIP hostesses, you can look back at how parties went before. You can say if you're doing a hostess reunion party, which is one of the templates that we have in our template library, you can say... I have your guest list from last time. Is there anybody we need to add or remove? I can go ahead and mail out the invitations. You know, those type of things. When you already have these tools together and organized and stuff, then you can, you know, you can utilize them to the best of their ability. Um, and speaking of that guest list, we talked about guest list no-shows. Here's the thing that I love about getting a paper guest list that you can't do with Facebook and you can't do with Evite and all that kind of stuff is you have guest list no-shows. If your hostess, let's say she invites 20 people and 10 people come, there are 10 guest list no-shows. You can't automatically assume that they didn't wanna come. Maybe they had to work. Maybe their kids got sick. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they were out of town. So after every party, I would compare my order forms to who, you know, who came to who was on the guest list and didn't come. And I would make a really quick phone call, and we have this in our scripts section of Party Plan Divas, but I made a really quick phone call just to say, I saw that you were on the guest list and I'm so bummed I didn't get a chance to meet you. Would you be interested in still placing an order that would you know, credit your friend's party, or are you even interested in having your own party we can still give your friend credit for the booking? Okay, um, it's just, again, you, you can't assume that people didn't want to be there. Sometimes they'll say, oh man, I totally forgot, or I was so bummed, I had to work, that kind of stuff. Your hostess is going to be super impressed and super happy that you're helping her to boost her sales and her bookings, so more free stuff for her. Um, and it's making a connection with some of those people that you haven't met yet, so it's a great way to kind of, you know, expand out. Now, when I have people that say, Lindsay, I've tried hostess coaching, but my hostess won't answer the phone or we're playing phone tag and stuff like that. I always, always, always use the phone. Now we have texting, so you can text some of this stuff as well, although I recommend actual phone call first. As a last resort, I'm also going to share with you the postcard system that I used. And I just used Vistaprint. You guys know I love Vistaprint. They have sales all the time. I've never had a problem with them. Even if I've had something come in printed wrong, they've always taken great care of me. So I love Vistaprint. But I did have a postcard system, and I'll share those with you. The first one was I'm watching for your guest list. I mailed this out a few days 
after the party was booked, if I hadn't gotten a guest list, um, it says if you've already if sent your completed guest list back to me, including the postage, um, then you've already earned your first free product. Everyone will be so excited, you know, yada yada. Don't forget to over invite. Only a third of those actually attend. So this is cute. Um, and then this one I mailed right before the party. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it says it's almost time. So, um, and on the back here, it talks about the party squares or the party scavenger hunt, whichever one I had sent. Um, you know, and I just talk about how they can increase their sales and increase their attendance, kind of a reminder on that. Um, and then I also, I use the great big ones for a thank you card. Um, so, you know, again, thing about hostess coaching is if you have a plan, if you have a strategy, and if you have an organizational system for it, it can absolutely make all the difference in your business. You want every single party that you walk out of your house to do to be the absolute best that it can be, and hostess coaching is the way to do that. All right, hope you learned a lot. All of these files and tools and stuff, the only thing that you need that I can't give you is manila folders, um, but all the files and everything is right below so you can see those and get started on taking care of your own hostess folders and keep that organized. Again, if you have any questions, you can use the widget in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen to ask me questions or head on over to our Facebook community. Thanks so much. I will see you next week. Bye.